serious and let's be used for once in a blue moon and review this practical SUV. Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to Hyundai Santa Fe. I actually really like the looks of this car, but we will hop in and we will find out how it feels to drive it. Let's do this. And how does Santa Fe feel to drive? Well, it is absolutely lovely. Not only because of the comfortable seats and overall space, but because of the right quality. It is soft, it is smooth, this car absorbs all of the bumps and imperfections. It is also very quiet and relaxing as long as you don't rev it. Now, the visibility is very good. You're sitting high up, seeing everything that there is to see. Now that we're on the subject of practicality, what about the fuel consumption? Well, I'm averaging about 8 litres, which is about 30 miles to the gallon. If you look at the size of this car, I consider this to be an excellent result. There is 625 litres of boot space, easy access, slide in, slide out. Should you decide to go with the third row of seats, there's still a solid 547 litres to carry all the clutter that you simply can't live without. compared to suspension to other SUVs, it is not the softest to start with. When you put this lovely vehicle into sport mode, you put your foot down. Yes, it becomes a little bit punchier, but it is also louder and firmer. Now, on curvy roads like this one, you still feel the enormous weight of this car. And you very quickly realize that dynamic driving isn't exactly its cup of tea. Does it come as a surprise? Of course not. This is a, it's a comfortable, soft SUV. We're fine in love tonight. You and what about the cabin of Santa Fe? Well, overall, it is very lovely in here. I must admit, when I first hopped to this car, I said out loud, wow Hyundai, well done. That is because you can't fool the quality of the materials or the finishing. I love this brown coloring. I also like the style. It is simple, it is uncluttered. These seats are lovely. Okay, they're fake leather, but they do have the heating system and cooling, which is important on the days like this one. And things are getting hotter. Infotainment system, simple, straightforward, easy to use. Okay, nothing is simple for a blonde, but never mind. Overall, I like it. And I like it a lot. Anyway, let's put this car into comfort mode where it feels at its best. Now, under the bonnet, I've got a 2.2 liter diesel engine. Don't get me started with diesel. It is fine. It is very quiet and civilized. The power is being sent to all four wheels, 200 horsepower to be precise. I also have 400 newton meters of torque. Now, 0 to 100 is 9.4 seconds. It's plenty for the nature of this car. It just suits it. The maximum speed is 203 kilometers an hour, which is about 100 125 miles per hour. Now, four-wheel drive comes as standard. What else comes as standard is eight-speed automatic transmission, which is soft and smooth. You essentially don't feel the change of gears at all. So there's no more grand version available in Santa Fe, but the wheelbase has been elongated by six and a half centimeters, which translates into more space. And there's certainly plenty of space in the second row. I'm sitting in the middle. The floor is completely flat. I can sit like a lady and it is actually quite bearable here, but it is much better in here. Lots of leg room, plenty of headroom. I like this beautiful panoramic sunroof. You can adjust the seats in here. Side. It is actually quite comfy in here. Now you can order yourself an additional row of seats, but as with most SUVs, there won't be much space in there, probably enough to carry, I'm not sure, your possum perhaps. Let's not expect miracles, ladies and gentlemen. This ain't a bus, this is an SUV. So who would buy Santa Fe? Well, certainly somebody who's got 48,000 Swiss francs spare, which is more or less an equivalent to the US dollar. Now in Switzerland, the diesel engine engine is the only engine available in Santa Fe. In other countries there are other engines and the prices do come down. The mo model I have with me today is worth about 65,000. So Hyundai is a Korean brand, but really there's a lot of American flavor happening. 
and why American will actually Santa Fe is the capital of New Mexico. And this car is also being produced in Montgomery in Alabama. Across the pond, the sort of ordinary SUV market is a lot more popular than it is in Europe and far greater. Now in Europe, a car of this size is usually a lot more expensive. We've got BMW X5, Mercedes-Benz GLE. In terms of ordinary SUVs, we of course got Koreans. We've got the Santa Fe, Kia Sorento, Sanyong Rexton. We also have Skoda Kodiak, Ford sneaking in with Edge, but that's about it. Because in America, it's a whole different ball game. We've got brands there that we haven't even heard of in Europe. Truth be told, in Europe, we are a little bit rednecks. Yes, I'm sorry. In the way we think of cars and in the way we buy cars, especially ordinary cars that normal people drive in daily life. In the likes of Australia, New Zealand, America, it is all about smart shopping. It is not about branding, it's about value for your money. Whilst in Europe, we are stuck in our little tiny heads, especially against Asian brands. And it's a pity because Santa Fe is a perfect example of what you can get. And you can get a whole lot of car for not that much money, actually. Well, okay, it's not cheap, but it's not super expensive. This car puts a lot of Germans on their toes and certainly puts most of them to shame when it comes to value for money. Anyway, enough whinging. This brings me to the end of this video. I'd like to thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it. As always, I look forward to your questions and your comments. Just don't give me a hard time about SUV or diesel because I'll delete these comments. I wish you a wonderful day, whatever that you're doing, and I shall see you all very, very soon. Bye!